Well, this race was a doozy. As our continuously expensive team sport binge myself and the crew have been on in the last few weeks continues, we found ourselves at Team Sport Nottingham recently, an electric biz cart track with minimal traction on the circuit surface. Yay! I've been karting now for about eight months, and I can say without a shadow of a doubt, this was my worst race yet. The track layout for Nottingham is fine, I guess. Nothing too special or memorable, just pretty serviceable, subtracting the lack of traction across the track, of course. Let's take a quick look at it. So the first thing when you cross the line is a big right-handed double apex that sort of chicanes into a small straight, which then takes you to a left hairpin up a ramp with a left-right chicane into a down ramp. Then it's a big sweeping right-hander, another right-hander after that, and then a left-hander into another straight, and then one more left-hander into the straight across the line. It's a pretty simplistic layout. Now, before we get into the race, I just want to quickly point out that I have a Discord server now. Ryan made it for me because he's a darling. If you're an avid karting enjoyer, just starting out, or even if you don't kart at all, you're more than welcome to join and chat with us. We've got channels for showing off your karting clips or maybe even your gear, and the link is in the description. Anyway, let's line up on the grid where I've been randomly allocated 8th out of 13th because the day I don't get placed mid to back of the grid at random in a 50 lapper is the day that Lando Norris wins a Grand Prix. Let's get this over with. And the lights go green and let's go racing. I get a really good start in this race actually, cutting in between two people straight through the middle to gain two positions. I try and get a run on the guy in the red suit, but he doesn't give me any space, closes me into the barriers, slows me down, and because Josh's lock stat is through the roof, it lets him straight through. So I've gained two positions and then lost one to Josh, as is typical. But as we come out of this corner here, the traction is obviously not there, and I accidentally give Josh a little bump in order to let him pass the guy who just put me into the barriers. So you could call that one teamwork, to be honest, even though it was completely unintentional. I get a really terrible exit coming out of that corner, but I have the inside line coming into the next corner, which means I can hold on to this position for now. As we come to the straight towards the left-hander hairpin, Josh goes for the inside line and doesn't quite understand how little traction there is, accidentally knocking Nathan out of the way when trying for a late break pass. It, to be fair, I do similar things, and I am having trouble with the traction as well. I'm sliding into every single barrier because I just can't find an iota of grip. I go deep into this corner, but fortunately I have the inside line. Josh accidentally closes Nathan off into the barriers, and he's absolutely not pleased about that. And then I get overtaken on the inside by cart 13. Remember this individual because things are about to get incredibly hairy for me with this individual in particular. We come towards the straight towards the left hander hairpin once again. I break earlier, I find the gap and I get the inside coming up to the chicane. Which means that's going to become the outside, I try giving the space. I'm fine. Is now a bad time to ask you to subscribe to the channel. So what in the name of Roman Grosjean even happened here? Well, me and Cart 13 are coming side by side on the only part of the entire circuit with any traction whatsoever, which is a blind right into a down ramp. I'm on his outside and I try my best to give him as much space as I can without sacrificing my speed and also, you know, not plowing head on into a barrier. Apparently, I didn't give him enough space because he ever so slightly glances off of the barrier, which with enough momentum was enough to put me into the barriers, which absorbed my entire force of the impact turning me sideways directly into the oncoming path of a cart, causing an absolutely colossal pileup behind me. It's also worth noting that this impact absolutely folded me sideways, to the point where it actually knocked my GoPro out of alignment so it was pointing to the left side of my face. So yeah, this was a fun way to start a race.
So now as we tentatively continue after that absolute disaster of a crash, it means that I'm now also three places down because the guy who knocked me into the barriers got a position over me and an entire corner's worth of distance, and then these two overtook me as I came to a stop when I saw the red flag. So not only am I shaken by what just happened, I've also got a recovery drive on my hands because no race I ever have can ever just be simple. Ugh... Now the people we're on the track with are by no means slow, I've been trying to get past this guy on my right for the last three laps now, but I think an opportunity is about to present itself because I get a slightly better exit out of that corner than he does, I go for the inside line, but I basically enable a switchback because I leave the line wide open because of the lack of traction. I don't feel like having that same accident again, so I drop off a little bit just to get the inside line coming into this corner. I accidentally give him a little bit of a nudge, but it wasn't enough to constitute a dirty pass, and I finally managed to secure that position. Now the next car in front of me is miles away and I'm probably going to have to battle to defend this position I've just taken because I don't know what I'm doing and I hate low traction circuits with all of my heart. If you want a visual example of just how poorly I'm doing in this race, this guy overtakes me on the inside through here because I just completely lose all traction and let's cut forward about five laps. This is where he ends up. I can't see him anymore. To the point where I've essentially been driving around the track in what feels like a completely empty race. Like, the grid is so separated that everyone's, everyone's miles away from each other, so there's no actual racing going on for the majority of this. Until we get to lap 19. Yes, 10 whole laps before I manage to catch up to anyone. I'm having a great time, can you tell? This right in front of me is Xavier wearing the wrong helmet because we got all the way to Nottingham before he realized he'd left it in his room. Are you inside? I am still so paranoid about the crash earlier on that I have to shout at him to let him know that I am on his inside so we don't have another accident. I try and find the inside gap on this guy, but he loses the back end, uses that to his advantage, and I accidentally give him a little bump because of a bit of harsh braking to be honest but he's still defending his position so what do i know i try and cut to the inside to look for the space and again his back end kicks out puts him in the center of the track which is a defensive position for that kind of move so i'm having a bit of trouble getting past this guy who is clearly slower than me but is defending against me with all of his might again he slows down on the apex does not give me any sort of window this is how defending works it's just really infuriating that this is the guy who's defending against me he goes really deep into that corner immediately saves it trying to get into the middle of the track and i accidentally bump past the guy it obviously wasn't my intention to do that but he basically brake checked me by going slower into that corner than i expected him to so there wasn't really a whole lot i could do to avoid that contact and to be honest i wasn't in the frame of mind to let him straight past again because well the marshals didn't think it was a problem and i'm just trying to gain any ground i can after what happened at the start <laughs> Subtracting the crash at the beginning, there's actually not been a whole lot of incidents this race, this being the first of its kind on lap 22. Given the complete lack of traction, I was expecting a yellow flag bonanza, but to be fair, the people we're racing with on the track really seem to know what they're doing and really know how to take this track properly, because I am struggling to catch up to anyone this race. That's mostly because I'm bad though, I am, I am terrible at karting. People seem to think I'm good at this, I don't know why. Several more laps of absolute nothing go by until I find this guy parked on the apex of the final corner, which inevitably will bring out a yellow flag at some point. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. Took a little bit longer than it should have, considering the marshal was right there looking at him, but oh well. I'm now catching up to the back of cart 19, who isn't Xavier, but looks like Xavier from behind because of the pink balaclava and grey helmet. This was why Xavier forgetting his helmet was such a pain in the arse for me in the editing process. He goes incredibly deep into that corner after accidentally clipping one of the apexes, basically letting me straight through. I don't know if I've just overtaken a back marker or not though, because these races always get so confusing to understand what's going on that I don't even bother with a position counter. And to be fair, looking at my position would just make me sad in this race anyway. Way. So I can see the rest of the pack is being held up by something roughly two corners away. So if I knuckle down and focus, maybe I can catch up. Maybe this isn't completely over. But it will be completely over if I continue making mistakes like that because I can't find the traction. I hate low traction circuits! 
A little while later, we catch up to another person again, who I'm pretty sure this guy in particular was placed upon this mortal coil to irritate me. I am on his outside here, and I try and get him moved on. He breaks in this apex when he doesn't need to, and I look for a gap on the inside, which I can't find. He then closes me out a little bit, so I try and go for the switchback, and he breaks in the middle of the track. He exists to get on my nerves. We go to the down ramp, and he's still holding the center of the track, looking out for me, absolutely loses it on the exit, and parks himself nose first into the barriers, which went yellows incredibly quickly, actually. So at least one of the marshals is on the ball. We're now catching up to the back of Xavier once again, who, when coming down the straight, raises his right hand slightly and then starts slowing down to pull into the pits. Me slowing down in response causes the guy behind me to spin out. Do you want to know what Xavier was doing? He was doing Nottingham's bright idea for swapping the electric carts. Pit stops! And after two more laps of absolute nothing, it's finally time for my pit stop. I pull into the pit with a vague direction of where to pull the cart I'm supposed to be getting out of. He tells me to drive to the furthest lane away. I then scramble out of my cart, making sure to bring my seat insert with me because comfort is one of the things that you need in order to successfully drive a cart properly. He vaguely gestures in the direction of one of the carts I'm supposed to be getting into. He says the number eight. Now look here, that's the number eight, right? Okay, let's play forward a little bit. Oh, you've got to be Sebastian Vettel and Pierre Gasly. Oh. Yep, that's right. In my rush to get to the correct cart, I accidentally miss the number one on the front of this cart and get strolled. I get into cart 18, wasting valuable seconds when I should have been at cart eight. The one cart in all of these rows not positioned at the front. And because I've wasted so much time, I don't even have the time to adjust my seat or my pedals, which are both all the way forward. So I finished the last 10 laps of this race, stanced in my cart like Waluigi, several laps down from anyone even remotely close to the lead. What a brilliant idea! And as if to capitalize on my pain, my would-be murderer finds a gap in between me because my weight distribution is now completely off because my entire seating position has changed. I'm trying my best not to bash my knees into the steering wheel as I try and control my car from this new seating position. I didn't have the time to adjust it because that pit stop went so poorly. The pit stop probably didn't even need to happen to be honest because we're now 10 laps away from the finish of the race. Ah oh well, the race is almost over. Let's see if we can finish this on a note. It won't be a high note, but hopefully it'll be a note. Now come on, you didn't think this race was going to end incident free, did you? Because this happens on the last corner. I have no idea what caused this incident, but fortunately I managed to escape from it completely unscathed, gaining three positions back there. Although the reality is I probably unlapped myself considering how poorly that pit stop went, but fortunately it meant that I wasn't caught up in another collision that would have absolutely tanked my time even further than it already has been by everything that's happened in this race. And just to really hammer home how terrible I am, I've been caught behind this guy here for the last four laps. I try and get a decent line down the inside for some reason which completely sacrifices my corner exit and allows Josh to lap me. I am not having fun, and watching Josh pass me twice is the most demoralizing thing on the planet. A lap later, Josh makes absolute mincemeat of the guy who's been absolutely slowing me down for the past five laps, and even manages to get the overtake done on the chicane, something I couldn't do without getting myself nearly killed. But it means that I'm still stuck behind cart 4, who tries to get the line on Josh, messes it up, kicks his back end out, and slows me down as a result. Letting through my would-be murderer almost, but I think I managed to close that out. Nope, I don't manage to close it out. And then through comes Ryan, through the gap that that left as well. This is just terrible. Oh, this couldn't have gone any worse. Ryan has given me his bad luck for this race, and I don't want it. He can have it back. He can have his bad luck back. And I'm not able to catch up to Ryan on the final lap as we cross the line to bring an end to a race that I did not enjoy in the slightest. So let's just get this glory final lap out of the way, pull into the pits, and I'll give you my closing thoughts. So there you have it. This race absolutely sucked for me. My complete inability to adjust to low traction circuits, the worst pit stop since Valtteri Bottas in Monaco, and the most violent 30 mile an hour crash you've ever seen in your life. It's only fair that I state that Nottingham is now my least favourite track in the country, on the basis that Team Sport Stoke once held that title purely due to me having a bad experience the first time I went there. 
Team Sport Stoke only black flagged me during a practice session. Nottingham tried to kill me! I was not happy with how this race went, so much so that I had to wait several days after the race to even think about making this video, and even then having to start over because I was just so bitter about it in what I'd made already. Of course, I can make this now, now that I have the frame of mind to laugh at my own mistakes, but it was after this race specifically, myself and the crew came to the collective realization. We are getting bored of indoor tracks. We made plans in the car park immediately after that race to go to Daytona Tamworth next to try the D-Max cards. 70 miles an hour on outdoor circuits sounds amazing. At least it would have been, until Ryan's car decided to have a whoopsie and the MOT test said no. So it might be just a little while longer before we're graced with an exhaust fume baptism of a D-Max cart. The next video is going to be at Cannon Raceway, a place I went to by myself because the rest of the crew refused to go there ever again. Sounds like a lovely place. Until next time.